This is Brendan with QZAC Prep, and this video is going to be a quick introduction to complex numbers, what they are, why they matter, and what you're going to have to do with them, and what you're not going to have to do with them on the SAT. So for starters, complex numbers, as you might remember from Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, is just anything where you're taking the square root of a negative. Uh, you can take the negative out of the square root by taking an i out of the square root. Uh, so in other words, i is just equal to the square root of negative 1, as we can see right here. Some common examples or things you might have to do on the SAT, uh, kind of simple problems, would be, let's say they gave you something like the square root of negative 5. Well, you would just have to know that in order to take this square root, uh, to take the negative out, you would simply remove the negative and place an i outside of the radical. Another type of problem that you might be asked would involve a little bit more simplification. Uh, maybe you had something like the square root of negative 9. Uh, well, this is just kind of a radical question. Uh, the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And the square root of the negative uh, would be i. So we can take this out as uh, 3i. Okay. So pretty simple. Um, nothing really too complicated about that. Now, uh, the most common mistake I'll see students make is a lot of times a problem will be presented to them where I will actually be in the problem. And what they try to do is they try to use this property up here that i is equal to the square root of negative 1 and replace i with the square root of negative 1. You never really want to do that on the SAT or ACT. There are other math courses where you may have to do that. But for the SAT and ACT, it's really a one-way street where you're pretty much only ever going to take the square root of negative 1 and turn it into i. So if you see i, don't try to make it the square root of negative 1. That's not going to be too helpful for you. Rather, what you want to be able to do is memorize this pattern that i's exhibit. Uh, so I've written the pattern down here, and I've kind of shown three different iterations of it. Um, and just memorize this short list in the front, these values right here. So i to the first is just equal to i. And that makes sense because anything to the power of 1 is just itself. i squared is equal to negative 1. Uh, and that basically comes from if you take this complex number pattern up here and you square both sides of it, uh, you're going to find that i squared is equal to negative 1. The radical on the right side just cancels out. You're left with i squared on the left side. Now, as you go down a little bit further, you can see here that i cubed is equal to negative i, and then i to the fourth is equal to 1. Again, we could kind of show a similar derivation for that, but you're not going to need that for the SAT, so we're just going to leave it out. Just memorize this pattern. i to the first is 1, i to the second is negative 1, i to the third, negative i and i to the fourth, 1. Okay, so now that we've established that pattern of four numbers, what we can see is this pattern just kind of keeps repeating itself every pocket of four numbers. So if I go past i to the fourth and I go to i to the fifth, well, we can actually see that that's just the same thing as i to the first. i to the sixth is just the same thing as i squared. i to the third is just the same thing as i to the seventh i to the 4th is just the same thing as i to the 8th. Repeats again. i to the 9th is just the same as i to the 5th. i to the 6th, same as i to the 10th. i to the 7th, same as i to the 11th. And i to the 8th is the same as i to the 12th. So we have this pattern that builds. Uh, now, this is something you could count out if the numbers were pretty small. Maybe if you're only going up to i to the 7th or i to the 10th, uh, it would be pretty easy to write out this pattern. But where it gets difficult on the SAT is if they throw something crazy at you. Uh, maybe they're going to ask you something like, what is i to the 213th power? Well, you don't have that much time on the SAT. You don't want to be writing out i to the first, i to the second, i to the third, all the way up to i to the 213. But fortunately, this pattern has a... Uh, we can take advantage of this pattern. So what we can notice about this is every multiple of 4 has the same value. i to the 4th is the same as i to the 8th is the same as i to the 12th. 
all of those values are multiples of four and they're gonna have the same number. So essentially that means that this sequence resets any time we hit a multiple of four. Uh, so if I get to say i to the 400, I know that that would be just equal to one. Now, if I move one past that to i to the 401, it would just be the same as this whole first row of numbers right here, and it would just equal i. Two numbers past it, i squared, negative one. Three numbers past it, i cubed, negative i. So the easiest way to handle this, because uh, you probably don't have all the multiples of four memorized in your head up to infinity, would just be to take whatever this exponent is and divide it by four. So if I do 213 divided by four, four can't go into two, four does go into 21, goes in five times. We then multiply, four times five would give us 20. We subtract, 21 minus 20 is one, bring down the three. Four goes into 13, three times, four times three is 12, and then we subtract again, we get one. Four cannot go into one. Uh, so that means that that's the remainder. If you remember back to how we do division, uh, the remainder would be one. So what we know then is that i to the 213th power, we just take this remainder and it becomes the exponent. So this is just the same thing as i to the first, which we can see from our initial series of four over there is just equal to i. Let's do a couple more examples. Maybe we had i to the 316 power. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing where we just do try to figure out how many times does four go into 316. Uh, can't go into three, goes into 31 uh, seven times. Four times seven is 28. Uh, when we subtract that, we get three. We bring down the six, 36. Four goes into 36 exactly nine times. Boom, it works out perfectly. No remainder. There's no remainder. That simply just means it's the same as i to the 4th or i to the 8th or i to the 12th. All those would have no remainder as well. So i to the 316 is the same as i to the 4th, which is just equal to 1. Finally, we'll do just one last example of this type. Uh, let's say we had i to the, uh, I don't know, 77. Uh, so we could do 77 divided by 4. 4 goes into 7 one time, uh, 4 times 1 is uh, 4, subtract 3, bring down the 7, 4 goes into 37 9 times, 4 times 9, 36, 1, 4 goes into 1, um, can't go into 1, so that means that's the remainder, and same thing, if the remainder is 1, this means i to the 77th is just the same as i to the 1st, which is just equal to i. And that's the beginning of complex numbers. These would be kind of the more basic problems you might have to deal with, uh, either taking a negative out of the square root as i, or perhaps um, uh, you know taking i to some power and reducing it. And that's just kind of how you get started. So try to feel comfortable with this, and then we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next topic, which is gonna deal with how do we multiply things that have i in them, how do we foil uh, binomials that have I, um, and then uh, the video after that will deal with complex conjugates and how to simplify when you have I in the denominator. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.